Welcome to my guide on setting up PCM with Windows 95 and Voodoo 2 Graphics Acceleration. So to start off with we're going to need a few things here such as PCM itself. We are going to need the ROMs for PCM. The ROMs are what allow you to emulate the motherboards, CPUs, BIOS, video cards, sound cards and so on. We are going to need a few drivers, well two to be precise, the S3 Verge for your video card and we're going to need Voodoo drivers for the 3DFX. A tool we're going to need later on is folder to ISO and we'll cover that when we get there. And of course our Windows now I'm using Windows 95 today, but this will also work for Windows 98, it'll just take a bit longer. You can find your own copy of that. I will have download links below for most of this stuff. Barring the Windows 95, like I said you can find that, but should I have missed anything? Everything here is just a Google search away. Probably come up on the first page. Everything you need to get this working can be found online. So to begin with, we're going to take our PCM and extract that, which I've got here. That's going to look like this. The very next thing we're going to do is take our ROMs that we have downloaded and choose all of them out of this zip file. I'm going to copy the whole lot. I'm going to go back up into the PCM working directory. And yes, we are working with PCM version 17 as of this video, which is the current version of PCM. We're going to go into ROMs and I'm going to paste that in here and replace everything. Now that means PCM is ready to go. PCM will work wherever you dump it on your system. You don't need to run an installer or anything like that. It'll just yeah work wherever you put it. So we'll fire this up. And we'll ignore this, that's from earlier experimentation. We're going to go down here and create a new system. I'm going to call this Win95. Now, this is what our ROMs allow us to emulate. And we can go way back 8088. I have no familiarity with that architect. I started with 286, but we're not going to do that because we want the uh, Windows 95 era. But there is something to note here. When I first got this, I tried running a slot 1 Pentium 2. I used to have a Pentium 2 once upon a time. I had a Pentium 2 266. So that was the first thing I tried to emulate. Here's the thing with PCM, if you push it too high, like if you ran the Pentium 2 400 and even the 266, it doesn't work well. It's very unstable and becomes quite volatile. It'll work for a few minutes, but then it starts running into problems very quick and eventually becomes very unusable. Now, I don't know, I think this is the ROMs, but it could just be, it could be the ROMs, it could be the emulation software, or maybe you just need like a thread ripper or something to emulate this. I don't really see why that would be the case, but. So, from experimentation and a bit of online sleuthing, we have found that the Socket 7 Shuttle Pot 557 
running a Pentium 2, sorry, Pentium MMX 200 gives us the best results. It's quite stable, runs pretty fast. It's been working out very well for me. I'm going to max out the RAM, even though Windows 95, I'm pretty sure it doesn't go past 32 meg, but we won't worry about that. If you up it to Windows 98 later on, this will work. And that's this part done. So next is our graphics. We're going to use that S3 Verge. Now we want the 3DFX acceleration of the Voodoo, but we're going to configure this. I am going to open that configuration there and go to Voodoo 2. I'm going to up this to 4 megabytes on both the memory size and the frame buffer. Um, I'm going to leave this alone. You can put on the SLI and it'll give you two Voodoo 2 devices. Uh, that's all that changes. I'm not going to worry about that right now. Then we're going to go over to the sound and we're just going to go with Sound Blaster 16. Now the hard drive. This we have to pay a little bit of attention to. Here we're using the IDE system. And if you don't know what IDE is, you're very lucky. I do not miss IDE and I do not miss jumper switches one little bit. So we're going to take our primary master C drive here. It's going to be a hard drive. I'm going to create a new one. Here we can choose if we want an image or a virtual hard disk file. I'm going to stick with image because I can mount that later in DOS and I'm just going to call it Win95. I'm going to set the size to 200 megabyte. Now some might say that's 2 gigabyte, but some might know that's not really 2 gigabyte, but let's just pretend that's 2 gigabyte. That's going to create it for us. And that hard drive image will come up here in the working directory. That's it there. And there's my Windows 98 one. Now the reason I'm stuck with the 200 megabyte is uh, Windows 95, which is running DOS 7 I think, doesn't support um, anything bigger than that. If you're running Windows 98, you're fine. You can go much bigger. You can, I think you can go up to like 20 gigabyte if you want to. I don't know, it definitely supports 8. Honestly, I don't remember this stuff because the last time I used DOS was nearly 30 years ago. <clears throat> now, the next thing we're going to do is I'm just going to go with the primary slave, which is our D drive, and we're going to change that over to CD-ROM. And yes, anyone that knows IDE knows you'd never, ever, 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 ever put your CD-ROM drive and your hard drive on the same channel. But uh, in emulation, we don't care. And that's that. Mouse, I'm not going to worry about it. Leave it on Microsoft 2 button. I'm not going to bother configuring that. But if you do have devices hooked up to your system, which I do not at the moment, you can get like game pads and whatever you got there. You can do networking in this. I'm not going to bother with it. I have no reason. But it is a thing if you want to put your old operating system online and join a botnet in two and a half seconds, you can do that. Um, it would be kind of cool to have like a, a LAN and you know play some Quake and Duke Nukem 3D and Unreal but yeah, that's not something I'm going to do. Now our system is good to go. So we're going to fire that up. And we're not going to get far. It's going through the BIOS. So the first thing we're going to look at is 
If you're running Windows 95 like I am, then you're going to need to boot off a floppy, which you also will have to download. A floppy disk image, which I have here. I'm also going to load the Windows 95 CD-ROM. So here's my copy 95B. However, before we do this, I will quickly show if you're running Windows 98, you can boot off the CD here. And the way you do that is you go system, well you don't, but we've got to reboot. And as soon as I reboot, I'm going to hit delete to enter the BIOS. And delete. There we go. In here, you're going to go to chipset features. No, you're not. BIOS features. And here under boot sequence, change this over to CD-ROM. Make sure CD runs first. So that's if you run in Windows 98. I'm not running Windows 98, so I'm just going to leave it as was. And I'm going to exit this without saving. But another quick little note here is if you're running some of the other older BIOS, uh, if you're emulating some of the older systems, like the 486 class, you will have to go into here and do this uh, IDE hard drive auto detection. We don't have to with this one because, well, see back in the day, like 286, 486, 386, you had to tell the computer the hard drive was there. You know? in, in modern day, the computer tells us, but back then we had to tell the computer. Luckily, this Pentium 2 MMX, I don't know, might be a precursor to Pentium 3 or something, has auto detect on its own, so it will tell us. Now, it's booting off the floppy disk. This brings us to the first, I'd say, one out of three stages of setting up Windows 95 the preparing the hard disk stage. We are just going to run F disk. We're going to say yes, we want large support. Now it says here it will allow disks over 2 gigabyte, but I couldn't get it to recognize or petition anything above 2 gigabyte. I'm going to create and create primary DOS petition. And yes, we are going to mark it as active, so it knows that that's what we're going to boot off. And we are done ski. So, give it the old three finger salute again. So it can initialize those changes, so now that it recognizes it as a FAT file system with a boot record, Okay, now we have a C drive. It's not going to get us far. Anyway, so from the A drive, our boot floppy, we are going to go format C. That's fine. Proceed. And that will take a few seconds. Uh, this is not necessary, but we'll do it anyway. Now, our hard drive's good to go, so we switch over to the CD-ROM drive. This boot disk, for whatever reason, mounts the CD-ROM drive under R. And we go set up. Let it do its check. It probably mounts it under R in case like you've got a bunch of hard drives or petitions. 
Okay. Continue. No, but we're going to say yes anyway. Okay. See windows is fine. I'm just going to go compact, but the difference is next to nothing. Now, we need that pesky CD key. Or Windows license key to be correct. Games use CD keys. Okay, good to go. Now, just in case I didn't mention it before, everything you need to get this going is just a Google search away. Company, always bad company. Not worried about network, but yes, we will take sound, MIDI and video capture. Although we're never going to use a video capture device, even emulated. On, on this that is anyway. Yes, install most common. We do not need a startup disk. And off to the races. So this will only take a couple of minutes. Okay, so far so good. Yep, we are going to eject floppy disk. We will not be needing this anymore because now we can boot straight off the hard drive. Now, <clears throat> we let Windows here finish up, and I'll have to reboot one more time. And that will be the second part out of three parts of setting up Windows done. And the third part, the third part's, um, yeah, that's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. So something to note with Windows 95, and to a lesser degree with Windows 98, is, um, they're not necessarily consistent. So how things work out with me while well, I'm setting this up here now and how it might work out for you when you're setting yours up might vary. Not that it's going to matter too much because we're going to, we still have to do the same things anyway. Anyway, I'll explain that a bit more as we go. So, fix up my time zone, not worried about a printer, or the reboot. But we have a functioning Windows 95. Now it's a bit boring. We're stuck at 640 by 480 with 16 colors. Oof. All right, first thing I'm gonna do is go over here where we have our Windows 95 CD. I'm gonna open this. I'm gonna take this Win95 directory off the CD. I'm gonna copy that. 
I'm going to go into C here and I'm going to drop it right there. This is going to make life easier for us in the future. The reason we're doing this is if you're installing like, if you change your hardware configuration or installing DirectX or something, could be anything. Inevitably, Windows is going to ask you to insert the Windows 95 CD. So rather than mess around swapping in and out disk images, we can just point it to C colon slash Windows 95. Now, the other thing that we better cover about now is this tool I mentioned earlier, folder to ISO, and why this matters. The thing with PCM is trying to get data from your host PC here onto your emulated PC is very difficult, almost impossible. There's no real pass-through functions. One thing it does have is if you do have a physical CD-ROM, that will come up in the list here under CD drive. So physical CD-ROM with physical CDs, that will work, but that's it. Unlike DOSBox, you can't mount a folder, you can't give it access to a raw hard drive like bare metal, nothing. That's where this tool, folder to ISO, which is a nifty little standalone tool, comes in. Because what we're going to do, I'm going to take these drivers here for the S3 Verge, and look at that, it doesn't have a name, so I'm going to extract that to that. I'm just going to rename this because that's way too long. S3 drivers. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this. I go into this Voodoo directory where I've got the Voodoo drivers already sitting here. I'm going to paste this into that. So I've got all my video drivers there. I'm going to take this. I'm going to select that very folder, Voodoo. And then we're going to output that. I'm just going to drop it into this directory I have, which is one above the PCM working directory for me. You can put it wherever, doesn't matter. And I'm going to say video drivers. And that will save that as an ISO, save that, whack generate ISO, and that's done. It's not very big. And we should be done with that. So, to get our video drivers and Voodoo drivers working in DOSBox, we are going to load that ISO we just created. So that's in this directory for me video drivers and there it is it comes up as a CD we've got both of these so we're going to start with the S3 drivers first with that one we're just going to right click on the desktop go to properties go to settings over here advanced properties and change have disk, click browse, go to that CD, S3 drive, that's exactly what we want, hit OK, comes up in the list, hit OK. Now one of the things about 
Windows 95 not being particularly consistent is this may or may not work. Hit apply, hit OK. And for me it worked. Very good. If not worried about a monitor, oh wait. I might have spoken too soon. No, okay, for me it worked. If for some reason you did all of that and you come to your settings here and you're still on 16 color and you're still stuck at 640 by 480 and you can't change it, don't worry. Unless it spat out an error and rejected the drivers, then don't worry about it. It's fine because of what we're going to do next. But yeah, I hope that's clear. If, if it worked, but doesn't look like it's working, it's fine. And if it gave you an error, then something's gone wrong. The next thing we're going to do off that virtual ISO, uh, CD-ROM, sorry, that we created, is we're going to launch this here, which is the Voodoo drivers. Click OK. Now, it doesn't matter where we dump it, but we need to be able to find this. So I'm going to say C, I don't know, Voodoo. So you got to remember where this is, because you're going to need it. Unzip. Click OK. Uh-huh. Now, things here can be a bit tricky. And once again, there's inconsistencies. But what you're going to have to do, we're going to go to Device Manager here. You should have it here, PCI Multimedia Video Device. If you don't have this, there's another thing you can do. You can go to Settings, Control Panel, and Add New Hardware. And the process is going to be the same. It doesn't matter which path you take. If you do have this, then take this path. But if you don't have this showing up under other devices, then take the add new hardware path. And once you're there, we're going to go to driver. This bit is uh, going to be the same. We don't want Windows. Actually, yeah, we do. We want Windows to search for it. We're going to go other location, and this is where we need to remember. I'll just click browse where we put that um, voodoo directory we created, which is C voodoo in my case. Click OK, click finish. Ah, see, it's going to do that. Back to C, Voodoo, there's the file at once. So you might have to tell it a few times to go to that location. Ah, now it wants the Windows 95 CD-ROM. Well, we were clever cookies and we put that on our hard disk. It's right there on the CWin95. So to reiterate, doesn't matter if you go through device manager or if it's not in device manager, you go to add new hardware. You just have to keep pointing it to wherever you extracted those Voodoo drivers. And Windows is a bit hard of hearing sometimes. You might have to tell it a few times. Okay, let's give it a reboot and see how this works out. Okay, it's looking good. Uh, 
And there it is. We have Voodoo Acceleration. Now, when I said earlier, when you installed the S3 drivers, and if I said that you're still stuck at 16-bit and couldn't change the resolution, not to worry about it. Well, that means now that you've got the Voodoo drivers working, this should be working as well. And you should be able to set your, your colors. I'm going to leave it like this so it uses less resources. Everything should be working now. Once you have both drivers installed, everything should be working. If it's not, you've run into problems, maybe grab the wrong driver. So just to be sure, I'm going to load up a game to test this. We're going to go CD-ROM, load image. I want to go up one, games, DOS games, DOS, DOS ISOs. It's not really, it's a Windows game, but then Windows 95 is a DOS based operating system, so... Who cares? B-Zone. Yes, we'd like to install this. Yes, we need to install DirectX 5 because Windows 95 has no version of DirectX with it. Windows 98 comes with, uh, I don't know, DirectX 6. Don't hold me to that, but it's got some version of DirectX shipped in it. 95 does not. Okay, that drive is good. Oh, we can update our sound card very well. Ah, ah, I swear this is the only game, maybe, maybe you've had two games ever do this to me. This product requires the English language, Windows 95 NT operating system, oh shit, well, we're running Windows 95. But because I bought this game here home in Australia, I need to set my region to English Australia Australia mate reboot okay everything's fair dinkum let's try this again Okay, yes, this is what we wanted, so it's detected the uh, 3D effects. We don't need it buried that deep. Siri, when was NASA formed? Nineteen fifty two media shower. Uh, 
1952 meteor Well, holy crap. That's some else. So that was a thing. Hang on, is that that's hmm. twenty fourth of August? Huh. Oh, there you go. The more you know. Okay, so this should be good to play. Now, this is a good sign. We've got Voodoo 2, Voodoo Direct X6. Very good, go. That's annoying, but that can be a problem for another day. Okay. Let's see if it runs. Sometimes it bugs me that Armstrong and Shepard get all the credit. So far, so oh, good. Wanted to win the Cold War. Satellite Commander, enabled. we've discovered a deposit of biometal along with some strange radar signatures. <gasps> Build a scavenger <gasps> and escort it to the biometal deposit. This is, um, quite playable. Although it be 640 by 480, but it's working. I mean, I could play this. I'd rather have 1024 by 768, but hey, at least I didn't have to buy this again off Steam. <laughs> so that's it, there we go. This is now a functioning Windows 95 operating system with 3D effects. So, I hope that helped. Thanks for watching. And until another time, peace.